the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today is the day that we begin to formally prepare for the Great Lent. Now, the parable of the publican and the Pharisee reminds us of the importance of humble repentance. And indeed, over the next eight weeks or so, we're going to hear a lot about repentance and humility, self-denial and taking up one's cross, the spiritual struggle, and the labor of working on our salvation. But before we begin that arduous task, let us look, take a brief respite to look at something a little different. The publican, standing afar off, wouldn't lift up so much as his eyes to heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified. Do you see it? Do you see the most beautiful and wonderful thing that is shown to us here? This man was justified. That is, he was forgiven. God's unconditional forgiveness is the great promise that we can build, that we can hold on to all during the great fast. God loves us, and he eagerly awaits our repentance. He is there with his arms outstretched to us, ready to lift us up and to bring us into the joy of his presence. If we confess our sins, he is ready and willing to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. This is a great blessing and a promise. When the Holy Apostle Peter came to Jesus walking on the water, he became overwhelmed by the violence of the wind and the sea around him, and fear set in. And Peter began to sink, and he cried out in that moment, Lord, save me! And there was Jesus at his side, lifting Peter out of the waves and setting him safely in the boat. See how simple it all was? All Peter had to do was to cry out, confessing his weakness and his need of the help of the Lord Jesus Christ, and there he was with outstretched hands, taking Peter out of danger and placing him in safety. There will be many times during the coming fast when we may well be overwhelmed by the violence of our sins and the whisperings of despair that the demons constantly suggest to us. We will be sinking in the sea of our own fears, our own passions, our own weakness. And at that moment, cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And there he'll be, ready to lift you out of the mire of your sins and set you firmly in the safety of the Ark of the Salvation, that is his own church. The Pharisee of the, of the parable came to God and instead of confessing his own sinfulness and entrusting himself to the care of God, he began to tell God how righteous he was uh, on his own. He didn't, he didn't see, he didn't see, or, or if he did, he didn't admit it, that his own sinfulness but instead he bragged to God about how he didn't need God's help because he was good enough or even better on his own. This is the condition of many in this world. They don't see or don't admit their own sins. It is as if they are blind to their helpless condition. This inability to see one's own sins comes about by a lack of repentance. We always need to cultivate a climate of repentance so that we can maintain some sensitivity towards sin. When a specific sinful state is prolonged, the initial sensitivity towards this sin disappears. Now, very often when a person sins, they immediately feel the shame and the horror of their sin, and even as they are still in the midst of the sinful act, and many times they can't even stop, but still this is what they feel. But if repentance is put off or completely avoided, then we begin to harden inside, and after a time, our sinful actions no longer phase us. The truth is that we must be in a constant state of repentance. We must refresh our spirit of repentance day and night. In doing this, we will maintain the necessary sensitivity and will keep from falling into the abyss of corruption. The great danger when we've lost our sensitivity to sin is that we begin to blame God for our sins. This shifting of blame starts very subtly as we first begin to blame others for our sin. Someone else made me do this. It's their fault, not mine. They need to repent, not me. And when we notice these thoughts in our mind and heart, that's a great danger sign. We've already begun the process of hardening our heart. As this shifting of blame continues, we begin to find ways to blame God himself for our sins. God made me this way, so it's only natural that I do this. And so on. 
Beware of such thinking, for these thoughts only lead us away from the path of salvation, and they begin to tie us down and we become enslaved to our own sin. So what do we do? How can I escape such a strong and subtle trap? The answer is the great mystery of the grace of God. God will come to help the sinner as long as the state of the soul is not irreversible. What makes it irreversible? Only the lack of repentance. All one needs to do is to humble himself and cry out with the public, and, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And God's grace is quick to act in us. Hearing our prayer, cry for help, our Lord rushes to our side. He reaches out his hand to us and lifts us up from the ways which threaten to overwhelm us. Nothing can prevent him from coming to us. Nothing can hold him back. The only thing that we have to do is to turn to him, confess our own weakness and helplessness, and throw ourselves completely on his mercy. At that moment that we turn to him, he pours out his grace on us. He heals the wounds that sin has afflicted on us, and he sets us again on the path of salvation. Yes, the lessons of the dangers of pride, the blessed state of humility, are evident in the gospel, and they are important to learn today. But this parable should be before the eyes of your heart and in your mind all week long. Read it every day this week, in the morning, and meditate on it throughout the whole day. Absorb everything that you can from it. Especially note the firm promise of forgiveness and the immediate reaction of the grace that is given to the publican. And fix this promise in your heart so that it will be an anchor throughout the whole of Great Lent. God loves you, and he desires your salvation. He has promised that he will provide for you all that you need. All you need to do is confess, like the publican, your own helplessness, and throw yourself into the loving and compassionate arms of our Lord Jesus Christ, and he will forgive you. He will heal you. He will pour out his grace upon you, and he will bring you into his presence to stand with the choir of the saints. This is the promise of our God to you. Do not let go of it or forget it, but hold on to it as your anchor for the coming struggle of great Lent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.